Hey guys, I hope you're doing well on tonight. God has blessed us to come and share with another Bible study. And for that, I'm excited. I'm motivated. Um, tonight, we're going to be dealing with a, a subject matter that we've been dealing with since Sunday. Um, Sunday, the directive that was given, if you're going to bask in the sufficiency of God's grace was expect God to show up on your behalf or expect God to act on your behalf. And then this week on our prayer line, we said you have to expect God to give you strength. You have to expect God to give you power. Uh, really, at the end of the day, you can't give up on hope. I know so often in our world and our society, there's so many things that are happening that's just wrong, bad, unjust, unfair, but you cannot give up on hope. You have to maintain having your confidence in the Lord. And that's why constantly you ought to be expecting God to show up. I said this morning on the prayer line, I expected God to bless me with a wonderful day. It is 7.01 p.m. April the 12th, excuse me, August the 12th, 2020. And God has blessed me with a wonderful day. You have to expect God to bless you when the pilgrims made their way to Jerusalem. They expected God to help them. They expected God to guide them. They expected God to protect them. And lastly, they expected God to preserve them. So I encourage you to continuously expect God to show up on your behalf. Expect God to act on your behalf. You can lose friends. You can lose money. You can lose popularity. But I encourage you, maintain your hope because that's what's going to get you through to the next day. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Now, let me say this. The question comes to mind. Well, I understand that I should expect God to show up, but why? Why should I expect God to show up? What, what, what reasons, what rationale, what, uh, what, what understanding can you give me, Pastor, to help me know that I need to expect God to, to show up? And that's what we're going to look at on tonight. There's several things that I want to look at. I pray you have your Bibles because we are going to look in our Bibles and we're going to take our time and I'm going to encourage you to just look at the scriptures as we talk about them and as we deal with them so that we can know exactly what the Word of God says about a particular subject matter. So that's what we want to look at. Why expect God to show up? What's the purpose? Why is it that you keep telling me I ought to have so much hope? I ought to have so much confidence. Why should I expect him to show up? I was disappointed when mama died. I was disappointed when my father died. I was sad, devastated when I lost my spouse. I was devastated when my child, a parent should bury a child. Not a child bearing a, a child should bury a parent, not a parent bearing a child. I was upset. I was disappointed. So now you're saying, Pastor, you're saying, have hope. Why? Let me give you several reasons. My first point that I want to tell you is because God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you that you can trust. Turning your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Bible on tonight. It's just what I was using and I really just enjoyed um, as I was studying in this climate, um, just how it was translated. So I'm going to be reading from that. I also have 
um, other translations I can look at so that we can get an understanding. But in that particular verse, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Let me read it again. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And that's a number one reason why you ought to expect God to show up. He has plans for you. The Bible has showed us in Jeremiah, God has plans for his children, wonderful plans, beautiful plans, strategic plans for each and every one of us that declare and know that we are a child of God. He has a plan for you, and you ought to declare that. He has a plan for me. God has a plan for my life. And I'm expecting God to show up because people that don't plan to show up usually don't take time to plan. What man builds a house without first counting the cause? If you're going to count the cause, you might as well go ahead and carry out your plans. Who would go to an architect and build and spend ten thousands of dollars to have drawings drawn up if they don't plan to Bill, And that's something that we need to analyze. That's something that we need to, to understand. We don't want to miss that. You can have hope and you can expect God to show up because God has declared he has a plan for you, a plan for good. That's what the Bible says, plans for your welfare, plans for your good, plans for your joy, plans to give you a future and a hope. Yeah, yeah, God has plans in line for me. Yeah, I may not know what my day is about tomorrow, but God does. I may not know what next year is about, but God does. I, you know, what's your long-term plan for the next five years and, and 10 years? And I believe in all of that. But even if I don't have it, God knows. He knows exactly my down settings and my uprising. And let me just say something on the sidebar. So often we can get so into making our own plans that we forsake the plans of God. Yeah, yeah, it's God's plans that's going to come to reality. So we better make sure we remain open so that God can bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. No one can destroy, hinder the plans of God. Now, God, let me tell you, and I can say this with boldness, and I want you to say it with the same boldness. God has plans for my life as there's not a darn thing no one else can do about it. You can't slow my plans down. You can't hinder my plans. Even when you think you're hindering my plans, you are just furthering my plans. I got two Bible examples. His brothers thought that they were slowing him down, Joseph that is. You know, they thought they was messing Joseph up. They was jealous. They was disappointed. They put Joseph in the pit. They sold him into slavery. Several years went by, but Joseph straightened them out. Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but what? Yeah, God meant it for good. God knew what he was doing the whole time. And I tell you, you better be careful how you treat people because, you know, you think you're messing them up, but really you're just furthering them. Yeah, yeah, you mean it for evil, but God is going to turn it around and he's going to mean it for good. In the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament, they really thought when they caught Jesus and they had Judas betray his master and they, they took Jesus from judgment hall to judgment hall and they, they mocked Jesus and they, 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 they talked about him and they teased him and they, they, they made him bear his own cross. They put a crown of thorns on his head and several other things. They just made him drink vinegar, just things. They thought that they was hurting something, but they didn't know that, that they was fulfilling the will of God. See, what God has for you 
It is for you. That's why the Bible says count it all joy. You know, you don't need to sit around having a pity party about what's going on in your life. Just know that God has you where you are and he's going to take everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, everything. And he's going to use it to make you a better person. That's why each and every day of your life, you ought to walk with your head up and expect God to show up because now you know, if you didn't know, God has a plan for you, plans for your joy, plans for your future, plans of hope that no one can destroy. And even when you don't know how he's going to do it, you can trust that God is going to do it. God is going to work out his plans for you, just like he's going to work out his plans for me and something else you can trust. You can trust that his timing is going to be perfect. His timing is going to be perfect. He is an on-time God. Yes, he is. And that's the attitude that you have to carry. Yeah, you can expect God to show up because he has promised you that he will do good to you in the future. Hope in God, I encourage you. Hope in God because his plans can't be stopped. See, yo, if you know anything, I know with me, man, I've made a whole lot of plans and decisions and none of them sometimes come to reality. I mean, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. And that's why, that's why, man, if you ever catch me and I had a friend that used to talk about me because I say this all the time and I'm going to continue to say it. If you hear me long enough, if it's not something in the word of God, that's a promise. I always say, if the Lord be willing, if the Lord be willing. That's what the Bible says we ought to do. Because I can say next week, I'm, but man, I'm going to be with you out of town. I'm coming to see you next week. You better say if the Lord be willing. Because you don't know what can happen in 24, 48, 72 hours, 96 hours. You don't know what can happen in a one week period. So you better say if the Lord be willing. If it's his will. Yeah, yeah, I've made a whole lot of plans. There's times where, man, I, I planned to pass a test, and I didn't. There's times where I planned to pass an inspection, but I didn't. There's times that I didn't plan for something to happen, and it did happen. See, you, you have to learn how to rely on the Lord. And I encourage you, you can, inspect, you can expect God to show up because he has plans for you. Please don't get away from the fact that the Lord has plans in store for you and he wants to bless you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you would take time and look at that chapter 29 of Jeremiah because even when you go to the next verse, it talks about how you need to call on him and it talks about how you need to pray to him and seek him with all your heart. And when you do, you will begin to see what he has already said in my first point leads you to my second point. Because my second point is not only can you expect God to show up because he has plans for you. You should expect him to show up because he's willing to establish your plans. Yeah, yeah, he's willing to establish the very plans he has put in place. See, I said a moment ago, you know, it takes an architect to draw up plans for a, a home or a building. But then after the architect draws the plans up, he can't stop there. He has to move to building. For over 50 years, my daddy served as an architect. He served as a, a general contractor, a builder. And I understood that it takes both. It takes the design. But then after the design, it takes the actual construction. And that's what point two is about. Yeah, your, your expectation level ought to be high because not only does God design the plan and tell you that he has designed it, but he also brings it to pass. 
In Proverbs chapter 16, you ought to have it up by now. I hope that you look at it and analyze it. In, in, in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it reads, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Commit your work to the Lord. In other words, hope in him. Put your confidence in him. Allow yourself to expect, not from man, not from one man, but from the Lord. Commit your work, commit your life, commit your hands into him. And your plans will be established. Everything, man, see, see, this is the catch. If I'm an owner of a piece of land and I have the best architect in the country that has designed the plans for my life, that has the best plans that you can ever imagine, he still needs my permission to build on my property. And God, he's not a forceful God. We are free moral beings. He's not going to twist your arm. He's not going to put a gun to your head. He's not going to force you or demand anything from you that you don't voluntarily want to do. And point two says, now, will you allow God to put into action the plans he has for your life from point one? And your answer should be yes. Yes, Lord, I will commit my work to you and my plans then, the plans that you have established for me, they will be established. The plans you have in my life, they will come to reality. I encourage you to look and expect God to do it. He's not only a designer, the God you serve is a builder. He can make it happen. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to tell you, you might not even know where you're going in life. Yeah, yeah, your life could be confusing. Your life could be uh, one great big mess of fog. But if you can just trust God and expect him to do what he does. See, so often we try to be our own little gods, and that's why it doesn't pan out the way we desire. But if I can get you just to trust God, and listen to what the word says, commit your work to him. Commit all of your labor, all of your desire, all of your sweat, all of your energy to the Lord, and let him bring it to pass. Let him establish your plans. Yeah, yeah, man. You can have sure hope when you know that he going to do it. Because like I said, I think I said this this morning or yesterday, just check God's track record. I think it was yesterday. I talk about how I go to Lowe's a lot. I go to Home Depot a lot. And I always, when I make a purchase before I buy, I like to read the reviews. And the type of reviews I like to read are those that have hundreds of reviews, thousands of uh, reviews. Those are the ones I read. And then after hundreds and uh, thousands of people have reviewed a certain product and it still has at least a four star, but I try to get four and a half to five, I feel comfortable with buying. I don't want nothing that don't have any reviews. And I don't want anything that just has 18 reviews because that could be 18 friends with a conspiracy going on. No, I want something where the record is straight that these people, they don't know each other. They have come together and they each declare how they feel about this particular product, you can go to Yelp, and Yelp will give you reviews. Go to TripAdvisor before you travel to some hotels and resorts, and they will tell you, and you, you all kind of just zoom in. And I know some people can make it seem like it's beautiful, and it's not. Then others can make it seem like it's the worst thing in the world, but it's not, but you ought to. At least look at the reviews. And that's what I've done with the Lord. And the Lord doesn't have hundreds of reviews and thousands. He has millions upon millions, billions upon 
billions of reviews. Everybody I know says you can't beat him. Everybody I know says he's a way maker. Everybody I know says he's a bridge over troubled water. Everybody I know says he is five star. David, for one, says he was young, but now he's old. David spent a lifetime with him. And he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You can trust that the Lord will bring to pass your plans. What God has for you, it is. You can trust it. It is for you. I can't bring my own plans. I've tried and it didn't work. But if you commit your plans to God, he will establish it. You can expect God to show up because he is the one who will bring your plans to pass. And I just believe that, guys. I believe that with my whole heart. I believe that God is faithful. I believe that he's good. I believe that he's mighty. And I believe that we should walk around with an expectation level that is so high. Man, people ought to just hear you, you know, this morning on the prayer line. That's how we closed out. I'm expecting God to show up. Girl, I hear that you're sick, but I'm expecting God to show up. I hear that your money is funny, but I'm expecting God to show up. I hear that you're about to file bankruptcy or be evicted, but I'm expecting God to show up. Girl, I hear what they wrote about you. I read, brother, what they were saying about you on social media, but I'm expecting God to show up. Don't allow people to break you and draw you out of your expectation that God will show up. Don't allow people to distract you and show up. Don't allow circumstances to consume you. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your mind focused on the Lord and let it be known. I'm expecting God to show up. And I got some witnesses out there. I'm only on a, a third point, but I got some witnesses. I haven't even hit the third point, but I got some witnesses that know that I've seen God show up. I know for a fact I've seen God show up in my life, man. I've been in accidents. I've been in situations. I've had various circumstances and incidents, and God has always faithfully showed up. He has always proven himself that he can fix it and that he can work it out. I love that song. Jesus can work it out. I believe it. And you have to begin to expect God to work on your behalf each and every day. I don't know what it is you are experiencing right now. It could be a sick child, a sick parent, it could be a, a dying spouse, could be money issues. You could be sick yourself. But I encourage you, take the energy and the faith you do have and expect God to do a miracle. And if you didn't know, I want you to know he's a miracle worker. He can take the impossible and make it possible. There's nothing to hoard for God. Let me give you this third point on why you can expect God to show up. Another reason why you can expect God to show up is because he has promised to finish what he started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really can expect God to show up because he is a promise keeper. Yeah, yeah, he is the originator of being a promise keeper. He didn't need the title. He just did the task. He is a promise keeper and he will finish what he started a few on. Um, a few Sundays ago, it was Father's Day uh, exact. That's what I preached about. Uh, if you was going to bask in the sufficiency of God's grace, you have to. And I was talking to fathers particularly, but everyone overall, finish what you start. And that's what I like about the Lord. He finished what he started. It was so important to him talking about my Savior that everyone knew that he was not a quitter. Everyone knew as he hung up there on that cross, he made it clear. It is what? Finish. 
And God wants us to know that he's a finisher. He's not only a starter. Anybody can start a family, but they don't finish. Anybody can start school, but they don't finish. Anybody can start a career, but they don't finish. Anyone can start a marriage, but they don't finish. Anyone can start a friendship, but they don't finish. But it's not about starting. It's about finishing. Blessed are those that endure tribulation and temptations. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to he that in what endures to win. The beginning? No, the end. He that endures when? To the end. I encourage you to get excited. Take hope knowing that God will finish what he started. Philippians 1, 6, you ought to have it by now. It reads, and I am sure of this. Paul says, I'm confident. I don't need nobody to try to talk me out of it. I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it, watch this, to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He that began a good work in you will finish it. He will bring it to completion. That's why I expect God to show up because he's a man of his word. He wouldn't have started something if he couldn't finish it. Yeah, yeah, you know, God, anybody say that's listening to me? Can you just shout hallelujah even if you're by yourself? I'm saved. And it took a miracle. Yeah, yeah, when God put the stars in the sky, it was good. And when he told the sun and the moon to get in their places, it was good. And when he separated the land from the sea, it was good. But when he saved my soul, it took a miracle. And I tell you, man, I serve a miracle working God. And he just didn't save my soul for that one Tuesday night several years ago. That would be a waste of time. God saved me on a Tuesday night several years ago and don't put in the work afterwards. No, there's a theological term for that. For my theologians, you tell them it's sanctification. God is working on me. That's why I tell people, don't be trying to judge me because you don't you see the sign? God is at work on me. God is still constructing me. I'm not all that I should be, but I praise God. God, that I'm not what I used to be. And you ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. If you have seen any growth in your life, it could have been just a week. It could have been a year, could be 10 years, could be 40 years. If you have seen growth in your life, you ought to shout hallelujah. I'm thankful that he that started with me, he has declared that he's going to finish with me. God finishes what he starts. And when he did that incredible work in my life, and if you're saved, and I'm talking to born again Christians, the work that he did in your life, he's going to finish it. But why did God save me? The ultimate reason he saved you so that you could be transformed into the image, the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. That's why God saved you. And God is going to take Everything you go through. I said it once, I said it again. The good, the bad, the ugly, the disappointing times, the indifferent times, the difficulties, by his sovereign hand, he's going to take it all to conform you to the image of Jesus Christ. And can I tell you something? He won't fail. Yeah, he won't fail. What he started, he's going to finish. There's not a devil in hell nor a demon on earth that can stop God from finishing what he has started in general and for you and I specifically. He's going to finish it. And I can expect that. And that's why I know he's going to show up. Yeah, yeah, James Cleveland knew it. James Cleveland said, I feel no ways tired. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I feel 
no ways tired and I don't feel tired. I pray I can get you not to feel tired. Don't get hung up in all of this politics that's going on. Don't get hung up in a pandemic. Don't get hung up in social injustices and you forget that God is faithful. Don't you forget that God is faithful. One more time. Don't you forget that God is faithful. He who begun a good work in you, he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I heard one person say, I don't believe there's no unfinished Christians in heaven. There's no incomplete believers in heaven. Everything God wants to do in your life, he's going to do it. I know when I was in school, if I didn't finish something, I would get an eye for incomplete. Sometimes the teacher, that was grace anyway, because the teachers wouldn't just give me an F. I should have just got a zero, but they would give me time and they would give me an incomplete. But see, there's no incomplete at the end of this classroom when God calls you home. Yeah, yeah, he said that everything that I wanted to do with you, I've done. And let me tell you, let me let me just diverse for a moment and just uh let me just divert just for a moment and say this to people that are mourning and sad because you're bereaved. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I, don't get me wrong, death hurts me just like it hurts you. But I have always tried to trust God and keep my expectation that he's not taking somebody that he's not finished with. Now, that's heavy because you expect him to take a 104 year old person. Hey, man, you even would expect the 87 year old person. But when you see God take a person who's 25, 30, 14. Two, a month, don't you never forget, God knows what he's doing. He's too wise to make a mistake. Although my weary eyes cannot see, he knows what's best for me. And we have to trust God. There's no, there's no incomplete believers in heaven. God says he's going to uh, begin and complete. What he has started in our lives. So I encourage you not to be encouraged. I'm dis dis disappointed or disencouraged because of the fact God wants to show up on your behalf. God wants to act. God has started a good, powerful work in your life. And don't tell me he hasn't. If you just woke up this morning, that's a good work right there. Like I said, if you can think about one area you have grown in, that's a powerful work right there. I, I've had habits that I would have never thought that I could have gotten over and broken those strongholds. But the Lord, I hear people all the time that have been on drugs and various things and they talk about how God delivered them. Yeah, don't you give up on God too quickly. God will certainly bring it to pass. He will bring it to completion and you can trust him. You can believe in him. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. As we go to our first fourth point, let me just say this. What we're dealing with tonight, guys, is just looking at the fact on why we can expect God to show up. Because we have to expect him to show up. We have to maintain hope. We have to trust God. We have to believe that he is a faithful Lord. And he's going to do everything he has said he's going to do. So what's another reason why we can um, expect God to show up? Because once again, he's a fulfiller of his purposes. Yeah, he's a fulfiller of his purposes. Just like I said earlier, he's not going to design something that he's not going to fulfill and carry out. 
and he's not going to give you a purpose. Every person that's born has a purpose in life. God told Jeremiah, I knew you even before what? I formed you where? In your mother's womb. I knew you. I ordained you to be a prophet. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. And we have to accept that if he has a purpose for us, He's going to fulfill that purpose in our lives. God wouldn't give you a purpose, guys, if he's not going to fulfill it. I know you may feel as if your life has no purpose. And if you feel that way, I encourage you to pray. I encourage you to commit your work to the Lord. I encourage you to get in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Talk to your spiritual advisor, your pastor, and get in position. God has a purpose for your life. Even in the body of Christ, there's something that you can bring to the table that no one else can bring to the table. That's why everyone should be a part. That's why at Beulah, everyone is a volunteer. Everyone. And those that know the history of where it all started, it was in 2005, I believe it was, when um, Dr. Tony Evans came and he blessed our spirits and he talked about the significance of everyone being a volunteer. And that moment, at that point, we began to put it into action. And that's why we have volunteer forms. Every person in covenant fellowship is a volunteer. You have to bring something to the table because there's something you bring that somebody else can't bring. Yeah, yeah. So often, man, we feel like that, oh, those over there, they, they can do it all. They're gifted. They're good. But there's something you have. And you're not even giving yourself the ability to see that you have it. But yeah, you have something that can't nobody else do. I praise God for the gifting that God has given me. But there are certain things, guys, I just can't do. And I praise God for him putting around me people that can fill in the voids and the gaps, people that can carry out ministry in areas that I can't. I remember going to a conference, um, it's been several years ago now, the late, great E.K. Bailey um, preaching conference. And E.K. Bailey said, I'm not a worshiper. I don't do no worshiping. I don't. That's not me. I didn't know, but my church needed it. So I went out and I got me a significant minister of worship. And that minister of worship came in. And it helped to bring worship, an element that I couldn't bring. And if you know E.K. Belly, one of the great um, expounders of God's word, and, uh, and he could he could exegete a text, but he said, I didn't know how to bring worship to the table. And, and he brought in somebody to fill the gap. And, and see, you might be that person. Yeah, you know, so often we look at church and say, well, they're missing this and they're missing that. It might be you. Yeah, yeah, you can't expect everyone to have every gifting, but everyone has something that they can bring to the table. There's only one of you and you can expect God wants to. He desires to fulfill his purpose in your life. And you ought to expect that every day. God's still bringing purpose out of me. God is taking me closer to my destiny. God is fulfilling purpose in my life. In Psalm 138, verse 8, it reads, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Let me read the first part. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. That's why I expect God to show up. He's promised to fulfill his purpose. And each and every day, there's some things, man, and some lessons I've had to go through good and bad, hurtful and painful. But I look back and I say, God, you did that for that reason. Sometimes God did it just to humble me. That was the very reason that uh, God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh to humble Paul. Paul says, God didn't want me to get a big head. God didn't want me to become conceited. 
And God, I've seen God humble me with a thorn. I've seen God do things. And I, I noticed that I understood that it was because he was fulfilling his purpose. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a verse in the prophets that says, I do what I do by taking you through the furnace of affliction. Yeah, yeah. The prophet said that God works by taking us through the furnace of what? Affliction. And so, so many times, man, uh, we, we want God to work and we want to fulfill him to fulfill his purpose in us. We want to be mature and complete, but we don't want him to honestly work in our lives because we don't like the way he fulfills purpose. Yeah, yeah. I take you through the furnace of affliction. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations, knowing that the testing of your faith does what? Work of patience. Let patience have what? Her perfect work. So then you can become mature, perfect, complete. Over and over, God teaches us that it, it takes something. After the Lord has finished trying me, I should come forth as what? Pure gold. See, God has to try us. And I'm, I'm so thankful that God, he has declared that he's going to fulfill his purpose in my life. I'm, I'm just overjoyed. I'm excited because I trust that I serve a faithful God, a significant God. And if he has something that I need, he's going to bring it out. Yeah, yeah, so many times we, we, we miss that. We miss the fact that he's going to do it. You can't miss God's will for your life. You can't. God has a crosshair on you. God has a, a target on you. And God is a shot shooter. He never misses. He never misses and he knows that he's not going to cause you to miss your purpose. He's not going to cause you to miss your will. God already knows why you're here. God already knows your life. You may not know it, but he knows it. And not even you can keep God from bringing to pass what he has planned for your life. Yeah, you can't even mess it up. So often, man, we, we get in our own way. Poor Abraham, man, went down and went to a country, took his lovely wife, and the Bible makes it seem as if Sarah was a beautiful woman. And he took Sarah down and uh, he lied, said it was his sister. And he was willing to just throw everything away. God couldn't let that happen. God intervened at that moment. He said, no. Nah. God began to speak to that king and that king had revelations. So even though Abraham was not going to interject or to stop it, God stepped in a different way. You can't, you can't stop God. There was a time that the children of Israel was being blessed and somebody went out and got them a, a sorcerer per se to go and put a curse, a hex on the, the children of Israel. And there's a lot of people that want to put a curse on you. There's a lot of people that want to put a hex on me. And, you know, they, they, they try to burn incense and do whatever they can do to try to get to you because they don't, they want to see your demise. They don't want to see your prosperity. And this sorcerer went out and he tried to put a hex. He tried to prophesy over the children of Israel. And the Bible said every time he opened his mouth, he blessed them even more than what they were already. God wouldn't let it come to pass. See, what God has for you, it is for you. God is going to fulfill his purpose in your life. Take that to the bank. Cash it. Walk in it. Trust God with it. Expect God to show up on your behalf because of it. Because he wants to bless you. God wants to show up in your life. And I encourage you not to, to miss that, not to get to a point where you just miss it because you, you just feel like there's no hope in the world and you're so busy reading the newspaper, you're concerned, you don't know about this. What am I going to do if, if the president that's there now wins another term? You're going to keep being the Christian that you are. You're going to keep trusting God. You're going to keep holding your head up. You're going to keep expecting God to show up. You're going to keep knowing that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know that if God has a person in place, Romans 13 says all authority is what? 
ordained by God. God sets up and pulls down. If it is happening, it's because God has allowed it to happen. Whether it's his perfect will or his permissive will, it is in his will. And if he's allowing it to happen, I will adjust because I know he's still sitting on the throne. I know he's still God of gods. I know he's still able. That's the attitude that you have to have if you want God to bless you. Why? Why expect God to show up? Because God says if you do expect him to show up, you'll get his goodness. God says, if you expect him to show up, he'll show up. Yeah, if you expect him to show up, he'll show up. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open unto you. Oh, I encourage you. Get to a point where you expect, I'm expecting God for the best. I'm expecting everything God has declared. God, I expect the stuff that I haven't even learned yet, but you have declared it on my behalf. I'm expecting it. Last week, we talked about the promises of God and the promises when God makes a declaration of his intent to bestow blessings upon you. When God makes a declaration of his intent to bless you. And God has made several declarations of his intent to bestow blessings upon you. Blessings upon me. God has made several declarations of his intent to bless me real good, as the old folks would say. He's made his declarations. Now, you think I'm not going to expect what he has declared? God is not like a man that he shall lie. No, the Bible says his word that goes out of his mouth shall not return unto him void, but shall accomplish the very thing that it was sent to do. I trust you, God. I trust you. Therefore, I expect to see your goodness. In Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14, you should have it. At this moment, David is writing, and David said, I'm reading from the English Standard. David said, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait for the Lord, Hoping it is what wait me. Hope in the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Hope in the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Expect God to show up. Expect the Lord to show up. Be strong. Let your heart not be troubled. Take courage. Expect God to do what he's going to do. I'm expecting to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm expecting to see it. And what I like about that, the Bible promises two things. One, the Bible promises that when we get to heaven, we're going to see all of his goodness, streets of gold, and, and no more pain, no more sickness. Oh, oh, he'll take his handkerchief and wipe away our, our, our tears from our eyes. And John says, no more sea separating us. And, oh, man, you expect to see it all when you get to heaven. Take off corruption, put on incorruption, mortality, and put on immortality. Oh, that's great. But David said, if you can hope and expect from him there, not only will you see his goodness in heaven, but you'll see it in the land of what? The living. You'll see it right now. See, I expect every day to see his goodness every day. Now, you know there's a verse that backs me up there. Surely goodness and mercy should do what? Follow me. When? all the days of my life. And I will dwell where? In the house of the Lord. While I'm living, I expect goodness. I just don't expect it. You know, I know there was a season, man, that it seemed like that all of the good saints, they were just waiting to get to heaven. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a time, what a time, what a time we're going to have. And that's a very true statement. Don't get me wrong. Very true. But it doesn't mean I'm supposed to live like hell and live in hell. For I'm here, and then finally, I take a deep breath and I make it over. No, no, it doesn't work that way. God has declared he'll give me goodness now. 
Don't forget what he said. I've come that you might have life and do what? Have it power more abundantly. God has come. God has come to give me life. God has come to, to shake up even my mortal man. He came to quicken my body. God has come to give me life. And whenever you expect from God, you can expect to see his goodness is following you. All you got to do is look around and you'll see the goodness of the Lord. I can run a list of things that God has been good to me just today. Be honest, I can run a list of things in the last 50 minutes. God has been good to me. God has given me the strength and the know-how to continuously speak to you for the last 50 minutes. Haven't taken a break, just speaking to you. Now, that means I'm breathing. It means I'm inhaling and, and exhaling. And see, it don't mean anything to you, but my mama, she's going to look at this particular broadcast. It means something to her. And it, it means something to me because there was a time where early on in my life, the doctors didn't give me that much credit. The doctors didn't give me that much um, credit to say I will be able to breathe. Something wrong with his lungs. And then he has a, a breathing issue and then he has asthma. But praise be to God. That's why, man, you ought to take a moment and just think about what God has already done for you and shout hallelujah. Think about what he did for you last year and how he brought you through 20. 19 and I know 2020 has been mysterious but just stop for a moment and forget about 2020 and shout about 2019 shout about 2018 shout about 2017 some folks didn't even think they would see past 2020 I mean 2010 but God has blessed you and you can give God's name the glory you can honor God God has been good to you, and you have to accept that. I encourage you, expect to see his goodness. Man, it makes me want to pray because God answers prayers. It makes me want to share what my needs are because God uh, meets needs. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I encourage you that you can experience joy. You can see God work in every area of your life, but you have to put your hope in him. And if you don't expect nothing, then don't talk about faith to me. Yeah, yeah, folks like to talk about faith, but if you don't have no hope, you don't have no faith. If you don't even expect good, you don't have any faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The summary, the sum, the totality of things hoped for. So you can't have faith without first having expectation, having confidence. I have confidence that God will do what he has said he would do. I have confidence that he will act. On my behalf, I have confidence that God will show up. And I encourage you, don't give up today. Keep hoping. Keep waiting on the Lord's perfect timing. It might not be your season, but don't you give up. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Be strong. Take courage in your heart, knowing that you serve a faithful God. Yeah, your hope won't be disappointed. Yeah, your hope won't be put to shame. You can have hope for your future. God is a faithful God, and you can trust him. You can believe in him that he will work it out on your behalf. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed our broadcast on tonight and I pray that God has given you strength. I do believe that uh, I probably will come back next week with a part two and continuously uh, continue to talk about 
why expect God to show up. But I pray what we've talked about on tonight will strengthen you and encourage you to, to want to expect. Expect to see his goodness. Understand that God has promised to fulfill his purpose in your life. Understand that he is willing to finish what he started. He started in you and he's going to finish in you. Understand that he wants to establish his plan in your life and he can't do it unless you're expecting him to do it, unless you're trusting him to do it. And also you can expect because God has plans of goodness for you, plans of welfare to give you a future and a hope. I hope you enjoyed us on tonight. I encourage you to, uh, to give. There's several ways you can, you can give. You can always give through PayPal. You can always give through Cash App, Give the file. You can just drop it into the mail and we will get it. Um, I apologize. I, I'm so thankful that I received the notification that someone was having problems with PayPal on the website. We was able to help that person and send them a link but I do believe that we have submitted an order to make sure it's corrected on the website. Anytime you have problems with your giving or you need directions, that's not the first time somebody has just called to get some assistance. Call, notify us at any time so that God can get the glory. We don't want you to miss your blessings. And I want to give you this so that you, that you have it. This is the number right here that you can call 301-660-5608. One of the ministers, when they lift up the phone and they talk with you, they will not only pray for you and help you, but they can make sure that any message that I need, or if not just for me, but if something needs to be taken care of, you can always email us to questions at Beulah Baptist Church. Um, dot org. There's so many ways to contact us so that we can continue to be a blessing in your life. Until next time, take care. God bless you.